Good afternoon, John Verlin, On Demand Advertising Solutions with another uh, podcast, number 15, Digital Marketing Update. I was going to talk about something else today, but I saw a video that I want to talk about that's really cool. Um, and it dawned on me, what if the Beatles had never made it and they had failed? Yeah, and I'm, I'm sure this has been talked about in the past, you know, and the timing, uh, their creativity, all the things that they influenced, hairstyles, clothing, music, poetry, photography, I mean, all, you know, arts, everything, uh, an entire culture, you know, even to this day, we still see the influence, particularly with the, a lot of the new, you know, the teenagers today are getting, <laughs> becoming Beatle fans to some degree. So, but it dawned on me from a business standpoint, what if they failed? What would have happened? How would the world be different if they would have failed? And I happened to catch on YouTube a really cool video. Uh, you'll see on the blog up above a little video link by Evan Carmichael put together. He calls it <laughs> uh, Sir Paul McCartney's 10 Rules for Success. And I think it's a great idea because we're actually – he put together video clips of interviews throughout the years with Paul McCartney about what the Beatles did to be successful. And it stands to reason maybe we can learn something um, for small businesses if we could do similar things that Paul McCartney and the Beatles did to be successful. Now, obviously, timing, you know, uh, they you couldn't have maybe planned that like they did, you know, with the uh, beginning of the 60s, everything changed after Elvis Presley and that kind of thing. But here are the things he he basically touches on of, of what they did to be successful. First thing he said was to do it because you can't help it. Whatever your hobby is, their, their songwriting actually started out, according to Paul, as a kind of a hobby. Uh, you know, they had covered Chuck Berry, Little Richard, a number of the American uh, black artists and rhythm and blues artists when they played the clubs in Hamburg, Germany. But the problem was everybody else was playing those songs. So to stand out, to be different, they would do B-sides of certain songs or started writing their own. So whenever they got up to play, nobody would be copying them. It would be unique and different, and people would stay and listen. So it was a hobby for him originally, and he just said, do it because you can't help it. Whatever that passion is, and that's true with your business. You know, you maybe started doing something on the side. You're good at it. You found your your talents, and you just do it because you're passionate about it. Second thing Paul said, and this was Evan Carmichael's favorite, was to be different. And, you know, we hear about a unique selling proposition, what, what value do you bring, that kind of thing for a business. But Paul was saying that they were always a little bit more artsy than a typical band. Uh, John and Paul had gone to a grammar school. Um, John had also gone to art school. Or George and Paul actually went to grammar school. John had gone to art school. And so they were just a little different in the form of being a little more artsy than other bands. And that made them different. The way, of course, the haircuts, the, the collarless jackets, the way they dress, the way they, the kidding around, the, the fun they had, that kind of thing, made them different than typical bands. They weren't boring. Third thing he says is to find your drive. What's that thing that drives you? Whatever that is. Is it to be, you know, to get a new car, uh, a new home? You know, they would think about these things, and that would help be a little bit of a, a, a motivation. Maybe it's deeper seated. It's a a fear you had growing up, or whatever that you have to overcome. But find the drive. Find something that will keep you motivated. Um, the fourth thing he said was to take it step at a time, step by step. You know, when they started out, they would maybe have a number one hit, um, and they just would keep doing these things. And obviously, luck played a, a part of all that because. Uh, you begin to get a flow, a feel for who you are, um, what your business is, so to speak, and they would take it a step at a time. Create one hit, turn around, do another one, 
do another one, you know, but they're, keep in mind, you're still plotting ahead, doing what really you've always done. As a matter of fact, George Harrison was quoted when they interviewed him about this. Well, you know, did, did you change after success happened? He said, no, but everybody else did. They had been doing the same thing step by step for years and nothing happened. And then suddenly it all happened. And I think that's something we can look at, too, for small businesses, that you keep doing what you're doing and you don't know when the right thing is going to happen. Um, and it may take a while, obviously. The fifth thing he said is just get out and do it. Just do what that passion is. So many books I've read, posts I've read, talk about the fear of failure. you never going to know until you try. And yeah, it is a little scary. But if you just get out and do it, you may be surprised with what you can end up doing. And if you're running a business right now, you know everything that Paul's talking about most likely because you've experienced this. But again, you have to be consistent, stay at it, don't give up. The next thing Paul talked about is fighting for yourself. They were in reference to this talking about when the Beatles broke up, Paul had to sue the other three to get rights to a lot of the songs, not just the manager they had, but the entity was the other three as well. So he had to fight for himself. And obviously it was a real painful breakup for the for the band, but uh, you know sometimes you got to hang in there and, and go for it and, and fight for yourself. Next thing he said, number seven, was produce what you like. A lot of times we, we think you've got to do a formula. Um you got to go with your gut, I guess is the best way to describe it. Something that you like, you can't please everybody. You can kind of try, but most successful people, artists, musicians, businesses, you know, you, yeah, you may do marketing research, product research, whatever, but it all comes down to what do you, what do you really, what are you happy with? What can you live with? that you enjoy. And that really is the extension of your passion, your idea. You know, you've heard countless stories of Steve Jobs, who was relentless in pursuing an idea for the Mac and that sort of thing. Not all of them are going to hit. You're going to have some failures. But if you do what you like, you have, you can be proud of that. You can stand back and say, you know what, this was, this is my passion and I achieved it. Maybe I tested a whole lot, but I finally found something that worked. And that's really what he, he's getting at is to, to do something that you enjoy and that you like. Next step, number eight, he said, is find your creative process. What is that? Do you get up every day at 6 a.m. and write down lists of ideas or uh, in ways to improve your business? Whatever that is, find that process. Discover that and stick with that. Uh, with he and John, one of them would come up with an idea, and then the other one might play off that. And then suddenly another idea popped out of the whole thing that wasn't there to begin with, you know, like a third person kind of thing. Uh, brainstorming is good for that. Uh, but find that creative process. That will keep you fresh, keep things moving and allows you to obviously build upon something that may already you've already come up with that was successful. Um, and then finally he talks about um, the ninth one is having integrity. Um, and they talked about this when Michael Jackson bought the Beatles catalog, how did he feel? And obviously he felt bad, particularly the fact that Michael Jackson allowed Revolution to be on a commercial. And Paul was like, that really bothered him because they never sold out. They never allowed commercialization to come in. Even though it was tempting, you get a huge bunch of cash, and he said they had a lot of offers, but they felt like they'd be selling out, and he never did that. And that's the idea of keeping their integrity, keeping their, their catalog within themselves, you know, and, and not selling out. Uh, so having integrity, obviously, you've got to live with yourself. And if you wake up the next day and you have buyer's remorse or seller's remorse, for something you maybe shouldn't have done, that looking back you you can't say, you know what, I had integrity by doing this or making that decision. And the last point, Paul says, is have fun. 
have a good time, enjoy your business, enjoy doing what you're doing. Really, that's what brings you pleasure. That's what brings the total reward, uh, particularly after you've achieved success and money and whatever you want to label that as, the fact you're having fun and enjoying it. And that really is what the entrepreneurial journey, I guess, comes down to is enjoying what you're doing. And if you make money at it, so much better. John Verlin, On Demand Advertising Solutions. Uh, contact me at jverlin1 at yahoo.com. On Demand Advertising Solutions.com is the website. And if you have questions, comments, love to hear from you. My number is 816 223 2105. And we'll talk again next week. Have a great day.